In this exercise, we're going to create a VHDN, VHDX. Server Manager is already open. We're going to click on Tools, Hyper-V Manager. We're going to go to our Plab Hyper-V device. Right mouse click, New, Virtual Machine. We're going to leave the default settings here and click Next. We'll name our device Plab. Config VM. Next. So now on this screen we have our choice of um, generation one and generation two. What what's new about the um, generation two virtual machines is that they provide support for things like secure boot, SCSI boot, and Pixie boot using the uh, standard network adapters and they must be running Windows Server 2012 or use 64-bit versions of Windows 8 but for our exercise we're gonna select uh, generation 1 machine next we're gonna go ahead and put 1.5 gigs of RAM click next In the um, configure networking, we're going to set up a private network, so we'll go for PLAB private, meaning that the virtual machines will only be able to communicate with each other. We'll click Next. We're going to keep the defaults for our storage options here, um, 127 gigs. We'll go ahead and click Next. As far as the operating system installation source, we're going to select install an operating system from a bootable CD DVD ROM. We'll leave the drive letter as is and click next. And we'll go ahead and click finish. The virtual machine is being built right now. Perfect. So we now have a new virtual machine, Plab Config VM. Now let's set up our VHD. So with Plab Config VM selected, right mouse click, go down to Settings. Let's go down to IDE Controller 0. It already selected hard drive, click Add. Under the uh, Media section, we're going to click New. The new virtual hard disk wizard comes up. Let's go ahead and click Next. Notice you can choose VHD that supports hard disk up to 2 gigs in size or VHDX that supports virtual disk up to 64 terabytes and is resilient to consistency issues that might affect you such as power failures. Something to note, the VHDX is not supported by operating systems older than Windows Server 2012. For our purposes, we're going to go with uh, VHDX. Let's go ahead and click Next. So it gives us three choices of VHDXs that we can create. Fixed size disk, dynamically expanding disk, or differencing disk. So the fixed disk, it's, it's the one that's going to give you the best performance. It's uh, recommended for servers that, that have applications with high disk activity. The disk file is created initially and then it uses the size of, of, of the uh, VHD that you initially uh, selected. The next type of disk is dynamically expanding. This type of disk is uh, better use of physical storage space and it's recommended for servers running applications that are not disk intensive. The virtual hard disk file that is created is small initially and changes as data is added. The next type of disk is a differencing disk. Now, this type of disk is associated in a uh, parent-child relationship with another disk that you want to leave intact. You can make changes to the data or operating system without affecting the parent disk so that you can revert the changes easily. 
all children must have the same virtual disk format as the parent disk uh, that is VHD or VHDX. Now for our purposes I think the dynamically expanding disk is going to be the best choice because it's going to start with a small footprint and it's going to grow in size as we need. So we'll select that one and go ahead and click next. We're going to go ahead and um, specify a name and location for this disk. We'll call this one plab1.vhdx and we'll go ahead and click next. We're going to stick with the uh, file size that it gave us, 127 gigabytes. We'll click next and this is just a uh, summary of what we're creating and we'll go ahead and click finish while it gets created. Let's get started on creating differencing drives. Differencing drives are dependent on the parent drive. There is a parent-child relationship that is created between parent and differencing drives respectively. Let's click on the ID controller zero. Notice hard drives comes up. We're going to click on add. We're going to click on new and go through the wizard. Of course, we're selecting VHDX, and this time we're going to go with differencing drive. So this type of disk is associated with the parent-child relationship with another disk you want to leave intact. Next. And the name of this one, we'll call it PLAB. 2.vhdx next the location is going to be plab config vm vhdx click next and this is a summary of what we're doing we'll go ahead and click finish and there you have it. So our second uh, disk is created. That's our differencing disk. One last thing. We need to make this one a SCSI controller. We'll go ahead and click apply. And we're done. For our next exercise we're going to modify some VHDs. So I'll go ahead and click OK to get out of this. So you could use the edit virtual hard disk wizard to perform actions to modify virtual hard disk. Let's go into the settings of our Hyper-V server, Plab VM. Let's go to settings. Click on the ID controller. Let's select Plab 1 and click on edit and we're getting the standard warnings as far as making changes to an active virtual disk. Let's click next. Right here we have some options as far as editing the virtual disk. We have compact, convert, and expand. Compact, this option compacts the file size of the virtual disk. The storage capacity of the virtual disk remains the same. Convert, this option converts a virtual disk by copying the contents to a new virtual hard disk. The new virtual hard disk can use a different type and format than the original virtual hard disk. And finally, expand. This option expands the capacity of the virtual hard disk. For this exercise, we're going to select expand and click next. We're going to go with 256 gigabytes of disk space. Click Next and Finish. We'll go ahead and click OK. On this exercise, we're going to modify our VHD disk. So we are selecting our virtual machine, Plab Config VM. 
go to settings click on settings let's click on the ID controller and the disk we're going to be working on is plab 1 VHDX we've selected it we'll go ahead and click on edit let's go ahead and click next and in our options here we'll go ahead and click expand to expand the capacity of this virtual hard disk and we'll make the size of this one 300 gigabytes click next and finish let's go ahead and click OK configure pass through disk your virtual machines can be configured through physical disk on the virtualization server in addition to virtual hard disk this is referred to as having a pass through disk connected to the virtual machine let's X out of Hyper-V manager go back to our server manager click on tools then computer management let's click on disk management let's select disk 1 and take that disk offline let's go back to server manager tools Hyper-V manager in this segment we'll be talking about managing VM checkpoints Microsoft calls them checkpoints in Windows Server 2012 R2 but they were previously known as snapshots we're going to be working with our win 802 VM right mouse click connect green button to turn it on click on desktop and let's create a new folder call this one marketing let's go to action checkpoint the checkpoint name is going to be simply with marketing folder let's click yes now we're gonna go ahead and select the marketing folder we're gonna delete it we're going inside the recycle bin and we're gonna delete it from the recycle bin right here it's saying that this deletion is gonna be permanent that's fine so it's gone for all intents and purposes now if we go back to action and select revert are you sure you want to revert this virtual machine to its previous checkpoint and I will say yes and there you have it our marketing folder is there let's go back to the Hyper-V manager and 
we see the checkpoint with the marketing folder what we're gonna do we're gonna delete this checkpoint it's gone now let's log back in to plabwin802 we're gonna delete the marketing folder go into the recycle bin delete it permanently action revert yes let's power on win 802 go back to the desktop notice the marketing folder is gone Let's shut this machine down Working with Fiber Channel Adapter. Fiber Channel or FC is a high speed network technology that commonly runs at 2 and up to 16 gigabit per second used to connect computer data storage. Let's change the settings on our virtual machine to use this technology. So right now we're on the Plab Hyper-V device. Let's click on Virtual SAN Manager. right here it gives you the option to create a virtual fiber channel SAN taking a look at the description a virtual fiber channel SAN groups physical HBA ports together you can add a virtual fiber channel adapter to a virtual machine and connect it to a virtual SAN let's go ahead and create We're going to call our device simply Plab FC. Go down and click OK. Let's go up to Plab DC. Right mouse click on it and select settings. On the hardware detail pan, we're going to select fiber channel adapter. And the description here is you can use a virtual fiber channel adapter to access fiber channel based storage directly from the virtual machine integration services are required in the guest operating system to access fiber channel based storage do not attach a system disk to a virtual fiber channel adapter system disk must be attached to an IDE controller and let's go ahead and um, add our fiber channel adapter let's go to our fiber channel adapter and add plab FC click OK we're redirected back to the Hyper-V manager our virtual fiber channel is now set up thanks for watching